Good afternoon, Pastor David. Hey, John. Welcome, everybody, to a random moment with Pastor David Unfiltered. I, I'm a little excited, Pastor. Uh, usually, those who may be turning on the first day, let me back up a little bit. On Tuesdays, what we like to do uh, is I like to ask Pastor questions that draw out the message that you'll be, you'll be teaching on, on Wednesday. And then we do the same on Thursday for Sunday's message. And I'm excited because tomorrow you're going to start a series on marriage and the family. Yeah. Something that is much needed today. Yeah. And so uh, looking at your study, uh, the points that you make here are, are, are good good points. Thank you, John. <laughs> <laughs> Did I get, I get your now? approval? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Is this a good time to ask for a raise? <laughs> no. <laughs> Just ask for your job. <laughs> we'll start there. I'm fired, you guys. <laughs> uh, but what I like what you put here is that you, you've listed in, in, your, in the notes here that there is this struggle between or this battle between the traditional uh, family or the traditional institution of marriage uh -huh. and this constant onslaught of this redefinition of what marriage is. Yep. And so can you explain a little bit about what this constant struggle is and how this has even crept into the church? You know, this battle against marriage is not brand new. I mean, it's obviously something that has existed from, from thousands of years back. You know, it's the, it's the reason that God gave commands related to marriage because pagan societies didn't have a value for the women, uh, value for family. Many of them didn't. The major ones during the time of Christ and just prior did not have uh, did not have a real value for for the institution of marriage. You know, the Romans looked at their wives and treated the wives in, uh, those married to a Roman man. They treated them like they were children. The father had complete authority in the home, and he had even the um, you know, the uh, right of life or death when it came to children and running the house. And that was transferred to the, uh, to the, the husband, you know, over, the, over his wife. So the husband during Roman times had a tremendous uh, power over her. So she was really without any real rights. And the Greek, the Greek man had a, uh, a concubine or women on the side for his pleasure. And he'd have a a wife so that he could have legitimate children. I mean, so you saw that in the Greeks, you know. So during the time of Christ, um, you know, the idea of having a loving, caring relationship with a woman wasn't necessarily part of how everybody thought. I mean, if you're a religious person with faith and, you're, and you understand the uh, essentials of relationship and what love means and all, your chances are you're going to have a, a good marriage and all. But there's always been problems within the confines of a man and woman, you know, because the two are of such different um, backgrounds. A woman and man, you know, um, have just different ways of dealing with life and various things. And anybody who denies that is living in a world that isn't real. And so when a husband and a woman join together, that's actually um, God's way of making the two one so that the two become one and actually better together. And that's what marriage is intended to do, is to make the two better together. And so the wife will bring into the, the marriage certain qualities that the husband lacks, and the husband brings into the marriage certain qualities that a woman will lack. And under the authority of God and under the uh, power of the Spirit and the unity that you have and in Christ, you know, you have the possibility of having uh, a successful marriage. And so we're going to begin looking at that tomorrow. But yeah, the... Society didn't value marriage and doesn't to this day. Mm -hmm. There is a, a, a you know a, a large rate of of individuals who are cohabiting, who are living together without the uh, the sense of an, a need for a contract of any sort, for any agreement, any kind of ceremony, and uh, unfortunately that is filtered even into the church, where there are people who uh, who actually are unmarried, having children, but think of themselves as being married simply because they think of themselves as being married. Even in our fellowship, John, I was just speaking to one of our secretaries who handles the request for baby dedications, who was just telling me just 15, 20 minutes ago how that very often, very often, people are calling saying, we want to dedicate our children. And when simple questions begin being asked, uh, we're discovering that 
you know, not that it's not that um, it's not that often, but it's it's more common than it, it has ever been, where they're saying, "Oh well, we're not married, you know, we just want to dedicate our children to God," and uh, turns out they're 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 living together in a state of of uh, of fornication and sometimes even in adultery. I'll be speaking of those mm. things tomorrow. Well, Pastor, uh, you know, thank you for sharing that because, yeah, it's been this ongoing thing. Uh, even when I know you'll probably be looking at divorce rates sometime in this marriage and family series. But I think this is a, a something that us church need to really to hear and, and hang on to as you address the family, especially in these times. So I want to thank you, Pastor, for sharing that. And again, you guys, tomorrow evening, services start at 7 p.m. where uh, Pastor David's going to start, uh, as mentioned, a series on marriage and the family Great opportunity to invite your friends and family to come out and join us. That's at 7 p.m. And then on Thursday, we have our worship conference. Yeah, we do. Uh, and I know you've been inviting our church to come out and join as you're going to be doing a Q&A with Odin Fong. Yes. And we'll have some worship. Yeah. So church family, come on out for that. No need to register for that. Not for that. And it's Not for Thursday, that, no. but for Friday and Saturday. It, it, for those who are planning on being in the, um, the conference itself, participating in the workshops and lunches and all of that, there is a there is a cost but for the thursday night alone um just to come to worship and and all for the opening of the conference uh our members of our our, our fellowship are come on invited to come out and join so come out and join us it's gonna be a great time q a mm -hmm. with you and odin so pastor thank you again and i'm excited as we look forward into the start this series and uh hope you guys are blessed and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow evening at 7 p.m thank Amen. you pastor oh one more thing uh, a couple more weeks, we're going to be showing the Israel video. So get your name on the interest list. We're still trying to determine a date, which we're possibly looking at June 26th as uh, a representative from Inspire Travel to come on out to and come join and, us and give us, and give us some meeting. information. Yeah, yes. the, the, the trip itself is in March of 2023. What is it? March, March 9th? 9th to the 20th. To the 20 to the 20th or 21st? To the 20th. To the 20th. Okay. And uh, and cost is looking at 43.89 total. Total. Yeah. So uh, there's some information there. Thank you guys for tuning in and God bless you.